Almost two years ago, I started this journal. Anne gave it to me after the funeral. I thought I'd never use it, but I picked it up the first time I was really all alone. September 19, my first entry. I feel like a zombie outside my body. I'm numb, and it's difficult to breathe. September 30. I can't concentrate. Time. It's 10 o'clock. I'm exhausted, but I can't go up to our bedroom yet. Sleep doesn't come, and the dark is so thick, so chilling. October 15. Charlie is dead one month today. I hurt so much, and I can't fight it. So for one day, I decided not to, and just hurt, and that's helping. October 29, I am cold with fear. The paperwork is like an ice wall, and I can't break through. I don't know how long the money will last. Oh, Charlie, why aren't you here to help me? I don't even know where you put all the records. November 17, Anne came over today and brought some chicken stew, and I realized how long it's been since I've cooked. November 27. I was so embarrassed today. I knew I shouldn't have gone to Ann and Dave's for Thanksgiving dinner. Suddenly, I couldn't hold back the tears. Everybody felt so awkward. I could see it all around the room. November 28. Ann called and said they've all learned a lesson from yesterday. They did feel awkward but they talked it over after I left and decided tears are a rather natural response to a loss. She said they'll be more at ease with my tears next time. Next time. December 24. Christmas time. So many memories. Our special Christmas morning breakfast together and dinner with the Georges but they went out of town this year. I don't know whether to trust myself at Ann and Dave's again. January 7. Dave came over last night and we began sorting through the records. We made a list of questions for my appointment with the accountant. Inheritance, state, federal taxes, house expenses, health insurance, investments. Oh, I know zilch about investments. No? I am not going to give in to fear this time. I'll give it all to the accountant. February 2nd. For the first time in my life, I am going to have a household budget. The project for this week is to use these forms to figure out all my living expenses. February 14. Valentine's Day. Last year, Charlie arrived home with a big bunch of flowers. How nice of the Georges to have invited me to the movies tonight. I wish my other friends wouldn't treat me like such a fifth wheel. You know, it's funny. No one else invites me out evenings. And now, investment decisions. I've never made investment decisions before. The young neighbors across the street say they put their money in a family of mutual funds. I don't even know what a mutual fund is, much less how a whole family of them behaves. March 1. Why is everything so difficult? I know I have to eat well, but it's such an effort to shop for one and then eat alone. Maybe I should set up a dinner tray and eat with the evening news. March 15. Dear Journal, my old friend. You're the only one who has seen me through these days and nights. I was beginning to feel things were getting better, but this week has been rotten. I heard our song on the radio a few days ago, and it's haunted me ever since, causing me to burst into tears and feel utterly helpless. It frightens me that such a small thing can make me lose control. April 7. I'll make up a work schedule to deal with all the demands. It'll be chores in the mornings and early afternoon. Then a good walk, a cup of tea, and some pleasant reading until dinner. 
A month later, May 7, on my walk today, life was just bursting out of the earth, flowers blooming their heads off. I wish I felt so alive. July 8. I decided to invite the neighbors across the street to dinner and learn about mutual funds. September 15. Sundays are always the worst, but today is especially hard. It's one year today since Charlie died. I've come a long way, but I still feel so lonely. Well, thank goodness for the Sunday paper. It takes all day to get through. November 1. Anne suggested I ask myself a question. Who am I? I am Rachel. I am a woman. I am someone in the midst of change. I used to be a teacher. In January, I filled an unexpected opening at a school only 15 minutes away from home. No more entries in my journal after that. Then in June, I read about the widowed person service in the paper and decided to get involved. Journal, what can you teach me? What did I need just after Charlie died? Number one, a person who wouldn't have been embarrassed by my tears, my anger, my frustrating moments. Number two, a person to consult on decisions. I was so swamped by the unknown. If someone could have shown me a way through the paperwork, then I would have gone to the accountant sooner and dealt with the lawyer, the insurance agent, and, oh, I would have saved myself so much confusion and pain. Number three, a confidant. Someone who didn't know my family or friends. Someone neutral that I could have tried out even crazy ideas on. Number four, a person who would have called me. I didn't know who or what to ask for in those first months. Sounds like the profile of a WPS volunteer. In the widowed person service, I'll be working with one or two newly widowed persons at a time, trying to be the person I wish I had after Charlie died. I'm feeling good about that and about joining the large support network that makes WPS work. Across the nation, programs like ours are reaching out to the nearly million men and women who are widowed each year. It's all done through a quilt work of community action. There's constant support from AARP, more ideas and effort from our local agencies, and an impressive training program for women and men widowed like me. Funny. After two years, I learned that what I went through after Charlie died is normal. The cycle of grief, it's called. And getting through it, the trainer called it grief work. Before our training sessions, I really hadn't given much thought to the different needs of widowed people. For instance, younger widows or widowers might need to find child care. Other widowers have never cooked for themselves before. But for all newly widowed, loneliness can be overwhelming. So they need someone to listen to them, someone who's been there. Now I feel more able to help others through the grief process. I use this booklet, On Being Alone. It's one of the resources AARP provides. I was really fortunate to have Ann and Dave's support. But if I had had someone who had gone through it all, like me, things would have been so much easier.